Okay, Evan Advance, what's happening? Um, got a request for a uh, <clears throat> for a rebuild on an Evan um, the 96 15 horsepower carburetor. Um, just so happens I was in the middle of uh, rebuilding one of these motors and uh, have the carburetor in my hand right here. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with removing these carburetors, there's a, <clears throat> the recoil starters can be very tricky um, getting them in and out. And um, I'll probably do videos on the various recoil starters, getting them in and out as a uh, as the series progresses, but as for right now, um, I just happen to have this carburetor out. I'm rebuilding one of these motors, and um, I decided that uh, might as well just go ahead and take advantage of it. Help some people out. <clears throat> okay, so this is a uh, it's a 96 15 horsepower. That's a Johnson or an Evan or whatever it was. Um, <clears throat> one thing you'll notice about these carburetors is they've got linkage. Um, there's a linkage piece on this. This there's a cam that comes across on your on your timing um, on your timing wheel and there's a lobe that comes across and opens this you can see back into here it opens your butterflies to uh, allow more volume of air to come through more fuel and the motor to go faster um, what you want to do is you want to pay attention to how this link piece goes on there because when it's all said and done sometimes it's uh, it's easy to forget how that link piece goes on um, The rest of the rest of the build on this is, is just just like any other carburetor, except for there's a few little different variances in there. Say so I'm going to need a uh, regular and a Phillips screwdriver, and that should be all the tools necessary to make this sucker go. Now this is uh, if you notice this this carburetor's got a little port right back here that's uh, that's plugged off. Now this port now this carburetor is made to operate on a couple different models. Now this one's a manual um, manual choke closes and chokes the carburetor like that. This little port back here is for the primer style unit. You'll have a primer that you pull out and push in and it actually injects fuel behind the butter, behind the, you know, injects fuel all over myself, behind the butterfly in that and uh, gives you a little, uh, a little charge of fuel to uh, initially start the motor on. Um, I like those a little better. That motor was a little more expensive because it's a little neater setup. Um, anyhow, um, let's uh, get this done here. Now, um, <clears throat> there's a ring that holds this on, and this ring is a rubber ring, and it's um, it's a very cold day out today where I am. I'm in uh, Clearwater, Florida, at Gulf Marine, and uh, so it's uh, it's pretty cold out today for us. So it's about 65 degrees. This ring's probably a little bit on the cool side. So. Uh, um, what I want to do is, uh, I'm going to pry on it for a second to see it, how cold it is. And if it's too cold, then I'm going to heat it up a little bit. So, let's, uh, get a little pick here and, uh, see about, okay, it's looking pretty soft. In fact, this might, yeah, it looks like it's going to come off there. If if you, and then almost locked it. <clears throat> if you have trouble getting these off, um, and a lot of times when they get older, they'll get brittle. If they get brittle, you might want to just go ahead and replace it. I know mean, it's like three dollars for that little stupid ring. Sometimes they'll come in your kit, other times not. Um, but heating them up makes them a little bit more pliable, and then you can uh, then you can get them off there easily. Okay, that just and you know, this cam roller just slides off there. I just leave it together. That way, I know that uh, you know that that uh, that linkage piece, the uh, actual bend, faces out. We'll get to disassembling this sucker. Before I uh, take the this is our mixing chamber plate. This right here, in this carburetor, is a plug. Get this guy out of there. Sometimes there's a jet in behind these. Sometimes not. It's always a surprise to me. I didn't open the book on this, so who knows? There is not a 
the jet in behind that. So, this guy is just a plug. It's got a little gasket here. See this gasket? We're going to discard all the, all the old parts when we take this apart. Um, I'm doing a complete block rebuild on this, so it's not really... Um, I don't really care whether, the, you know, I'll set this thing back to a factory setting, but as we do on um, on all of our carburetors and throttle bodies and with, with an idle adjustment screw is we count the turns in half, one, half, two, half, two and three quarter turns. So when I put this back together, I will seat this screw completely and then back it out two and three quarter turns. That's um, very common on these on these smaller units and then the two and three cylinder cylinder motors. It's a very common measurement. And we'll pull our idle screw out. And we want to take a good look at that. Make sure that it's um, make sure that's not damaged anyway. This is a plastic top on this, so uh, the the chances of it being damaged for being um, inserted too far is kind of small. So, when we take this car apart, when we take, we'll take the top off first. I like to take everything off the carburetor and then do the bowl last. That way, everything inside the bowl is protected by the actual bowl until we get to that portion of the build. So, we'll get all these screws out here. Having a hard time with this shoulder, it's kind of hard to pick it up. I, I got run over by a car a while back, and uh, I go for a surgery Wednesday on it, which is uh, looking forward to it. Be a lot of fun. Okay, now when you get these carburetor kits in for these motors, as with most. Johnson Avenue carburetor kits. They like to cover a few different model years with uh, with each kit. That way they're not having 5,000 different types of carburetor kits. So one kit is going to cover two to three motors. And due to that, you were going to have a few different cap gaskets in there. The, the mixing the mixing cap. I guess, you know, mixing chamber cap right here. But a few different types of these gaskets are going to come with your kit. So you want to make sure that you keep your gasket, set it aside, that way when you open your new kit, you'll be able to match it up to that, you'll know exact, exactly which gasket it is. Okay, now, looks like about everything, we'll go ahead and pull our drain. You want to be careful not to over tighten these drains when you put them back in in the uh, plastic bowls because that that uh, threads in these plastic bowls strip very easily. So, the rest of the little bit of fuel that's in there is going to go into my EPA OSHA approved container that's on the floor right there. We'll pull the bowl off. If you look at this bowl, they, uh, the guys at uh, Folks at Avenue would like to take some of the guesswork out for you. So there's a torque sequence on this bowl. There's little numbers on here, and that's how you, once you finally get this bowl snugged up, there's little numbers, little torque sequence on here. There is a torque sequence on this cap as well. Now two of these bosses right here are for when your airbox finally sits down on there. So you don't have, you know, you don't, <coughs> you're not going to have... Um, you're not going to have to worry about those when you get this on there. But when you get this on, you'll end up you'll torque and you'll end up torquing down in the sequence, and then you'll put your final two screws in that hold the air box on this carburetor. When I install the carburetor on this motor, which is going to be today or tomorrow, I will uh, I'll get that on video as well. That way, um, you guys can get some of the tips and tricks of uh, of how I do it, as well as uh, with the recoil starter. I, in fact, this might be a topside recoil starter, which I know it is actually, 
and the recoil starter on the on the top side when it just pops off the top you don't have to worry about it it's the recoil starter that sit to the um, port side of the carburetor there's two different styles that you have to remove to remove these carburetors that um, they get a little bit tricky when you're um, when you're doing them and um, I've had a lot of customers bring them into me all blown apart and um, because they didn't know a couple little tricks about holding that sucker together while you're doing it. Okay. Now. Okay. This carburetor, this bowl is for a few different types of uh, Few different types of carburetor. This will go all the way down to like a six horsepower. There'll be a gasket and a nozzle that fits down in there and stuff. This isn't that particular model. Um, this one is. Um, it's got your your main jet right there in the bottom of it. See the main jets right here. This is the one where we use that special driver tool to remove. And then uh, of course your float and your needle is in there. See that. So we'll. Um, this is a got the plastic hinge pin. This hinge pin will come with carburetor kit, so you can discard that, but I don't discard anything until I make sure that I have uh, the new stuff. So, hinge pin, there's our uh, needle and seat, we'll hold on to that, we'll get new stuff in the kit that uh, Evanrude is so kind to put in their kits for everybody, that way when you get done building a carburetor with an Evanrude kit, you know it's done right. A lot of other, um, you know, the, the other couple of the other bigger manufacturers out there you don't get a you don't get a needle, needle and seat you don't get the float in it you got to order all that stuff separately so when you you know order a carburetor kit from them you got to you know be detailed on the parts you, that you want however when you order one from Evanrude you say you want a carburetor kit and you get the whole kit which is uh, takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, right okay yeah um, in the nozzle well we have what's called a core plug in this and uh, this core plug must be removed in order to do a, a, a thorough soak and a, and a thorough inspection. So um, we're going to get a scratch all out. <clears throat> get into my trusty toolbox here. Okay, we got our special orifice driver. We got a scratch all. And oh, my hammer uh, where it's supposed to be. Okay. We've got our bowl here. We're going to put all of our gadgets in the bowl. Makes for a nice little parts tray. And let's see if we're going to need two bowl screws out. In order to hold it all together. Put the rest of everything in there. That way it all gets cleaned at one time. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and remove our high speed jet. Hopefully it breaks loose, then it did. Now this thing, is uh, this is an 832 jet, and it's a very small jet. And these are, um, these are rarely used as a high-speed jet, but on this little, uh, this little motor we can use it as a high-speed jet because uh, the diameter is large enough to, uh, to, to incorporate um, enough fuel to pass through this as well as you know, still have uh, enough shoulder on it left for your threads and everything. So um, usually we'll take a look at this jet, see what size it is. Um, I'm not going to really worry about it on this because you very, very rarely have to up jet or uh, or down jet a uh, um, a little 15 horse like this. It, it happens from time to time. I might uh, once I get it cleaned up, I'll tell, I'll pull out the magnifying glass because I'm old and I can't see anymore, and we'll take a look, see what size jet that is. Okay, now we'll get our uh, our seat. hurts like hell. Okay, now like um, most of the metal carburetors that uh, Evan Rude makes, Johnson Evan Rude makes, there's going to be a little plastic washer, spacer washer, that goes underneath your seat. See this little spacer washer there? Little plastic guy. Now, I always uh, make a mental note that this, you know, one of the, one of the carburetors that uh, actually uh, utilizes that spacer washer and that is uh, that aids in setting your float height, so your float uh, is uh, the right height. So set that aside. Now <clears throat> you want to be careful when taking this core plug out. 
you want to make sure you don't run your scratch all down too far or and um, you know damage the actual pickup tube itself so we'll give one little hit there Let's see if we can't wall her up perfect now down inside here also just like um, just like some other different model carburetors you can see that down inside here is an actual dip tube inside internal and external and idle dip tube down in there so that's why we want to be real careful not to go down too far when we're um, when we're knocking our scratch all in there to uh, pull that guy out and once we get it out of there we're going to inspect that stuff make sure that we didn't screw anything up with it Okay, everything looks good so far. All right, um, I got my two screws there. I'm gonna try to get all this stuff out of the way of the nozzle. I didn't. Okay. All my goodies are in the bowl. Uh, put a couple screws in the in the base here make sure everything stays together and then we're going to put it uh, down in our tank of fresh um, engine tuner and let her soak for a while and then uh, when the soaking is complete I'm going to uh, I'm going to get back with you guys and we're going to we're going to go through and uh, assemble this guy so, I think that's about everything for now, and I'll, um, I'll get back to you after the soaking's over.